Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to go through how to shut down a Java server gracefully. So let's jump over to the code here. And first off, I'm gonna show you a little bit of an example. Here I have a web service that takes a long while to load. If we open up a new tab here and go through, you see that it loads and loads and loads. It takes a lot of time to make it go through. And if you have something that is balanced in an environment, that doesn't really matter if it takes a while because each user will have their own connection to the server. And you might have something that is very critical that it actually does the work it's intended to. And if you are in a distributed environment, it's also important that every workload has its time to complete that workload. For instance, in our work uh, at, my com uh, at my company, we have a RabbitMQ server where we queue up a lot of work and then it takes one work and works on that and takes the next and so on. And if we scale that up and down, we don't want one service to go down before it's actually completed that work unit. So that's what I'm gonna look at today. And this is something that has been in Java since 1.3 but I haven't come across it before. So perhaps you haven't gone through that as well. So let's look here. First off, we have this service running here. It's nothing uh, strange with that. If we load this again and kill the service, we will see that it actually just shuts down. It doesn't complete the service. So that's what we want to accomplish with this. So going over to the code here, we can see that the only thing I have done here is in my handle of the get uh, method, I have added a 10 second delay. So that's our goal here to make it be able to run for 10 seconds because that's the workload in this case. So first off, we need to know how much, how many work units is actually running on this service and when it's in it, is it good for us to actually shut down? And we have a request handler here where we handle all the requests. And down here we have the handle function. So here I could, for instance, have work running as a variable and I add to that in the beginning here and then I decrease the number of working units uh, at the end. And if we add this as a field in this function here and set it to zero, it will have the correct count during this handle function. But we also see here that an IO exception can be something that is <laughs> possible in this function. So in order to make that uh, less prone to an error, we can have a try function here uh, where we put all the code and then we have a final finally where we actually decrease this running value. So we know that even though we increase it here, we will decrease it here even if we get a throw statement. Next up, we will have some function here, a public is, uh, boolean is running for instance and it will return true if work is uh, work units are more than zero so now we know if this is actually running and if it's a bad idea to shut it down so let's go over to the server site here so we have this request handler up here Let's move that out so we can actually work with it. So we have the request handler and we would put that into a context down here. We will do it, uh, make it final. And we also want to make the server final so we can actually change that later on because we add a context here. And in order to uh, be able to not take any more work when we have shut down, we want to remove this context. So we need to actually be able to call this server here from another context, so we make it final. So then we have the start down here, and before we do the start, there here is the interesting part. 
let's take the runtime. So that's what's running in our machine, and we will get the current runtime. And then we can add a shutdown hook on that runtime. It takes a thread. So let's create a new thread here. This thread is a new runnable. And then we have a run function. Here we can do pretty much what we want or whatever we want. So if this shutdown hook is run here, we will first off take this server and remove the context of the slash. So now we won't take any more requests to this service. Next up, I will uh, have a while loop. So while this uh, uh, request handler is running, I want to have a thread sleep for a second. So every second we will check if it's still running and we can surround this with an interrupt statement here. So we actually handle that issue that might uh, occur there. So now we have pretty much a functioning unit here. The problem I see is that I don't ever want to create a while loop in something as crucial as a shutdown that might close the uh, availability for the service to actually clean up. So I don't want this to run forever even if the workload takes a long time. So to accomplish this I will create an int here. I will call it timeout. And now let's say that the max amount of seconds that we allow this to run is 30 seconds. And then down here I will take the timeout and decrease it. And this while loop will run as long as it's running and the timeout is larger than zero. And to make it more visible that we actually are checking, uh, we can have a system out, print line busy for instance, just to say that we are still busy and we can't shut down at the moment. So why, yeah, we haven't added this up here. So now I think I have finalized the code. Maybe I've done something wrong, we will see. I will jump over to here, I will package this up and then start the service. So now the Java server is packaged and ready to go. So we'll start it. It started at port 80. We'll run this. It takes 10 seconds, but I will end it. And you see here, busy, busy, busy. We should get a few of these up to 10. And when it's done, it executes uh, or closes down. So in this way, we have a way to gracefully shut down our Java service. In our case, we have this running in our Docker environment in Kubernetes. We scale a lot of worker units up and down, and when they scale down, we want them still to be able to uh, complete that specific work unit that they are running on. Do you have any kind of this work where you have worker units that need to shut down gracefully, and do you have any a uh, way to do that that is different than this. Leave a comment about that in the comment section. If you knew about this shutdown hook, please leave a comment about that as well. Do you have any comments or suggestions? Leave those down there as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.